What is extremely important in the games from the GTA series is the relationship between the characters. It has some pros and cons because, while we are happy to look at Tommy Versetti's relationship with Ernest Kelly, in the case of CJ's betrayal by Big Smoke, we are very sad. However, in order for the atmosphere of the game to be maintained at the highest level, and for the player's emotions to change like a kaleidoscope, the game must provide various stimuli. Therefore, the developers always look for a golden ratio in all of this, and try to include in their production moments when the player is pissed off, another time sad, and another time happy, as if one had just found out that they had a lucky ticket with a big lottery win. Today, in connection with this short introduction, we will look at the acquaintance of Ken Rosenberg and Tommy Versetti. This relationship certainly provided us with many feelings, mostly positive ones. But the very tip of the acquaintance of these men ended rather poorly. Things are starting to come together nicely here. What's the plan, Tommy? Que pasa, amigo? The plan is you keep doing that like a moron. <laughs> Therefore, we will try to answer the question. Why did Tommy Versetti stop being friends with Ken Rosenberg after the events in GTA Vice City? Our analysis will be based both on the events of GTA Vice City and GTA San Andreas. However, it's worth noting that we won't include the case of Ray Liotta quitting working with Rockstar as one of the reasons. We will only focus on what we can conclude from the storyline. To come to interesting conclusions, we should really start from the very bottom. That is, from the moment when both gentlemen get to know each other. This is the very beginning of the plot of GTA Vice City. Ken Rosenberg, Ferrelli's trusted mafia lawyer, is asked to oversee a drug deal at the docks. Together with Ken, Tommy Versetti is also sent to Vice City along with two soldiers of the Ferrelli family. The team is to carry out an exchange and start the expansion of Florida at the behest of Sonny Ferrelli. However, in the end, the deal did not go as planned, and both men, Tommy and Ken, miraculously escaped with their lives. In order to survive and not get torn apart by Furious Sonny, they had to cooperate. They had to promise Sonny that they would find people responsible for the loss and think about a plan to look for those people. And so, the subsequent story missions that Tommy accepted from the lawyer focused on looking for any clue that would indicate where 20 kilos of cocaine and a large amount of money had gone. At the same time, Ken Rosenberg feels sorry for himself and stops appearing in public, fearing for his life. Tommy, on the other hand, searches for answers about a failed exchange at Viceport, establishing contacts with many important personalities in the criminal underworld. Another problem is that the Ferrelli family is putting more and more pressure on Ken, who fears that the Mafia might come after him at any moment. However, this reaction seems to be very exaggerated. The rationale behind this is that sending people to kill an inept lawyer is pointless, especially since the money problem still remains to be solved. So, it is rational to pressure from a safe distance and force to do favors because the organization has a lot to gain from this. A perfect example of this is the mission of Jury Fury. It is also worth mentioning that both men are starting to get involved in helping local businessmen like Avery Carrington to develop their connections within Vice City. They know that knowing such people can greatly increase the chance that the money problem will eventually be resolved. Throughout weeks, Tommy Versetti and Ken Rosenberg began dealing with more business issues. This is because Tommy Versetti murdered Ricardo Diaz and established his own criminal organization. Diaz's death gave both gentlemen many opportunities when it comes to running a business. Ken Rosenberg, shortly after the death of the cocaine baron, began to think that the best way to convince local businesses to pay protection money was to bribe them, which was a totally irrational idea. Oh, we could try bribery! Bribery? Screw bribery! I'll show you how to make them scared! After all, racketeering is about making the people who run the business pay us, not the other way around. Moving on, after buying a party oasis, that is the Malibu Club, Ken's approach to life changes drastically. We need a stick-up man, you know one? Hey Tommy! 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 This stuff keeps you sharp, man! Woo! I could be your stick-up man! Stick him up! Stick him up! You ain't a stick-up man, you're an idiot! The man forgets his debt with Tommy to Sonny Ferrelli. Our eyes then see a metamorphosis in which we witness Ken's transformation from an inept lawyer and coward to a drug addict and alcoholic. What's more, his addictions are funded, among others, from the pocket of Tommy Versetti. 
Whenever we go through any mission for the Malibu Club asset, we see Ken fooling around and snorting more and more cocaine. Eventually, Ken Rosenberg returned to the living when an impatient Sonny Ferrelli threatened him. In short, Sonny is going to come to Vice City and talk to both Tommy and Ken face to face. After that call, the lawyer was scared and dreaded again. In the end, the confrontation with Sonny for both men was successful. I don't think we're going to be getting any more heat from up north either. Because there ain't no up north anymore. It's all down south now. Wait, does that mean what I think it means? Tommy, baby! What do you think it means? That we're in charge! I mean, I mean that you're in charge. Oh, Tommy! While staying loyal to the end, Ken Rosenberg became a close associate in the Versetti gang, and it is possible that he was Tommy's own right-hand man there. And here comes the key moment from the point of view of today's episode, which we are witnessing while watching the introduction movie. As you can see, unfortunately, the following years were not very colorful for Rosenberg. As time went on, Tommy Versetti saw more and more of his partner's growing drug problem. Ken was becoming completely useless, giving nothing of himself, only enjoying the pleasures and luxuries, falling into an even greater addiction. In the introduction, we learn that Ken was in rehab, where he was most likely directed by Tommy Versetti. I don't need a bump. I don't need a bump. Cocus for the week. Cocus for the week. I am strong. I am strong. However, it seems that this request was just an excuse to end the relationship. Tommy Versetti might just have no remorse about looking Ken in the eyes and telling him it's over. After all, both men shared a long relationship, friendship, and they overcame many adversities together. Another issue is that Ken lost his right to work as a lawyer, apparently because the authorities became aware of his links to crime and drugs. Uh, uh, I need a job. Oh, I've been disbarred from the law. Oh. Even though Ken had undergone rehab, unfortunately, he was left all alone. When Ken tries to contact Tommy Versetti, his old friend doesn't respond as he prefers to cut himself off completely. Of course, Rosenberg's indignation is understandable because after he had undergone rehab, Tommy wouldn't even have a word with him. Ken believes this is unfair, arguing that he indirectly contributed to Tommy Versetti's top position. Tommy's behavior towards Rosenberg can be assessed ambiguously. It seems rational to get rid of a colleague who does not do his job properly. Due to such an employee, the entire group slows down its functioning and some gaps appear in the organization. So, you can lose a lot, especially when such people are in high positions such as the right hand. On the other hand, Tommy's behavior can be judged negatively and in a way shows that Versetti was a coward. Because the head of the organization, colloquially speaking, did not have the balls to look Ken in the eye and tell him that this was the end of their cooperation. Tommy also underestimated that Ken wanted to improve. The man agreed to go to rehab, which we know was initially successful. Moreover, Ken Rosenberg was loyal to his friend all the time, and yet he was mixed up in the mud and rejected by him. But of course, it must not be forgotten that Rosenberg quickly became a drug addict and an alcoholic who was thinking more about himself and his needs. The man did not realize that, apart from pleasures, you have to keep your head and help your organization. During the events of GTA San Andreas, at some point, we may notice that Ken has relapsed into his addiction. The question is, what would happen if Tommy had taken him back after his therapy was over? Perhaps Rosenberg would embrace himself for good and successfully help Tommy run the cocaine empire in Vice City. Let us know how you think Ken's life could have turned out if Versetti had given him a second chance. Meanwhile, that would be all for today. We recommend you to check out other videos from GTA Vice City, such as the one about Lance's betrayal or the one that was devoted to what the missions looked like in the beta version of the game. Thanks for being with us and see you in the next video. Bye.